Welcome to Realcast, the weekly roundup of the real asset markets. I'm joined by Dan Innes and Paul Strome. And in a week where we've sadly continued to see the war in Ukraine dominate the headlines, um, and we've seen a lot more companies withdrawing from Russia, including Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, as well as the big four accountants, PwC, Deloitte, EY, KPMG, and in the real estate sector, CBRE, Savills and Knight Frank joining Collier's withdrawing from Russia, and JLL announcing it would separate its domestic operations in Russia. And so there's now a huge wave of companies in the sector ceasing operations in Russia and Belarus, um, but encouraging, um, as last week actually, to see deals coming through in the CE region, including Heinz investing in Czech logistics, um, but also large deals elsewhere. Um, Paul, what have you been watching? As you said, we've seen some large sums being invested uh, despite all that's going on. Among the largest was Google paying over half a billion euros for Galamco Poland's The Warsaw Hub building, just when we might have expected a bit of a moratorium on activity in Central Europe, particularly Poland, given the increasing severity of the war in Ukraine. Google has been present in Poland for 15 years and was already one of the main tenants in the building, but so it plans now to spend a total of $700 million, that's about 642 million euros in all, buying and adapting the building. Then we've heard... Uh, Alliance Real Estate with Developer Edge and Pensions Group BVK announced they're jointly to develop a series of prime office assets in Germany's top four cities, Berlin, Hamburg, Munich and Frankfurt in a 1.3 billion uh, euro programme. The partnership will develop projects from the ground up in addition to repositioning existing stock. Um, primarily for offices. Allianz Real Estate CEO, North and Central Europe, Annette Kroger, said that the company and its partners want to build a portfolio of resilient, future-oriented and sustainable assets that will meet future tenant demands. This week also saw Canada Public uh, Sector Pension Investment Board and Allianz, again, weigh in to recapitalise central London office fund Wellputs, landmark 105 Victoria Street in London. Together, they're providing £400 million uh, pounds of development finance to, to fund the construction of a 500,000 square foot mainly office project on the site of the House of Fraser department store. As we already reported, Skanska has been awarded a 235 million uh, contract for the construction of the building. Um, works due to start uh, in July this year uh, with completion in 2026. Uh, the project is the largest speculative West End scheme ever to come forward and in April 2021 became the largest ever single commercial building consent granted by Westminster City Council. It will also be the largest all-electric office in the UK um, and uh, there's a commitment to bring all its supply all its energy from fully renewable sources. So there'll be no gas supply and no diesel generator on site. So an interesting building for, for several reasons. Those are just examples. There have been a large number of deals uh, this week and large deals. Um, presumably, they were in the pipeline before Putin uh, invaded Ukraine and set the markets on edge. Uh, we did hear a warning from leading academic Dr. Nicole Lux, a senior research fellow at the Bayes Business School, formerly the CAS. She said that as the search for Russian oligarch wealth continues, uh, from a lending perspective, we're already seeing a change in lender behaviour towards assets where the ultimate beneficial owner is of Russian origin. Um, and she points out that as these assets are no longer financeable, some European property companies and property funds are being rejected for refinancing by banks. This is part of the know your customer processes that banks go through, checking directors and shareholders of the organisations that they lend to. Lux says that at this stage, it's too early to say how many companies are affected, but it will add to the downward pressures on pricing as organisations have to seek quick sales of assets. Yeah, it'll be interesting to watch that. And we'll also pick that up in a session on debt at MIPIM. Um, I also noticed Cerberus in a 1.5 billion euro focus on first mile logistics and Brookfield re-entering the Dutch logistics market. So a lot of activity in the sector. And we'll be picking up logistics as well as a series of topics as part of our special MIPIM programme. Um, Dan, what have you been watching? Well, I mean, with this week, uh, the, you know, a lot of energy has been going into preparing for MIPIM and just thinking about some of the deal flows that have been coming through. Paul mentioned quite a few of them there and you in some of the sessions that you're planning, Richard. But I mean, it's just great to be back down there and remarkable, really, to think that about 20,000 
delegates are already registered for the event. You know, people were calling time on the event only this time last year. Um, and then, yeah, everybody's desperate to be back face to face with each other and the first chance to, to really see the industry at its best. You know, interesting, we've got the uh, former French president, Francois Hollande, giving a keynote speech from the UK. We've got people like Andy Street, former John Lewis, and now West Midlands mayor. Then we've got you know, Andy Pyle from KPMG, UK head of real estate speaking, and Breen, head of investment strategy at Aberdeen. You know, there's a really, really good speaker program, and um, a lot of it is going to be online and available to follow if you're not going to be uh, down in Cannes. But um, yeah, it will be great to be down there reunited with everybody uh, once again. Elsewhere, those big deals have been uh, motoring through. And as Paul says, you know, against that backdrop of political and economic uncertainty, uh, you know, over, over in Ukraine, you know, we're still seeing some really interesting uh, real estate transactions, you know, going through. One in particular that caught my eye is the, uh, the development company for St. John's College, Oxford, uh, which is called Thomas White Oxford. They've agreed a 50-50 joint venture with Canadian-based Cadillac Fairview and the developer Stanhope, to deliver a £700 million new global innovation district in Oxford. And that new company you know, is going to be called Oxford North Ventures. And that's going to deliver just under a million square feet of laboratory and workspace, along with other amenities and social value, not least some 480 new homes, 35% of which are going to be affordable, um, as well as the first public park on Canal Side. Those names you may well remember because this is the second joint venture, which includes Cadillac Fairview and Stanhope. Cadillac Fairview acquired White City Place in 2020, and it's actually where I'm sitting today, you know, which Stanhope continues to asset manage. Interesting one to follow that you know, on the life science trail. Elsewhere, um, British Land, um, they've sold half of its share in Canada Water and, and its master plan there to Australian Super for £290 million. You know, so BL and Australian Super now have this 50-50 joint venture on that 53-acre scheme. That's going to be accelerating its development over the next few years. It's one of L L London's largest regeneration projects. Um, you know, it's anticipated that future development is going to be funded through a combination of shareholder equity and third-party debt. Australian super, you know, you've seen them frequently on the retail real estate uh, trail, investing into many schemes in Europe. Of course, you know, they're one of Australia's largest pension funds. They've got over £140 billion uh, in assets under management um, and a bit of a growing presence in the UK property market. This JV for Canada Water, um, they've committed to developing phase one of the master plan, and that's going to be expected to be complete in the third quarter of 2024 just around the corner. So, um, so lots of these schemes, lots of these projects and investments all going to be the chatter around Cannes next week, no doubt, Richard. Yes, and if you are in Cannes for MIPIM, um, do join us at Club MIPIM 22 on the Quasette, just two minutes from the Palais, where we're running a full programme of networking events, and briefings, as well as video interviews. There'll be much talk of real estate in Cannes, I'm sure, um, but there'll also be a great deal of support for colleagues and friends in Ukraine, as the reality of the war begins to be seen, not least in interviews such as the one I saw with Kolyas Alexander Nosachenko, um, now as a soldier defending his homeland. But it's certainly been encouraging for me to see the industry coming together, especially in the CE region with many companies, including in the logistics, residential and hospitality sectors, supporting the growing refugee crisis. Um, thank you, Dan. Thank you, Paul. Thank you for joining us and look forward to seeing you next week for our regular roundup of the real asset markets.